I'm the CEO of Banerjee Rights, which is the distribution arm of the Banerjee Group. And I think with all of the streaming services, looking for more content, competing with our more traditional broadcasters, it's a great place to be for a distributor. So we're actually looking to source more content to, to meet the supply and really thinking carefully about what broadcasters are looking for. Um, so we've even started to commission some of our own programming, if you like, um, where we know that there's an appetite for programmes that aren't being commissioned in the UK or other markets where we source programming, um, we will actually work with a producer and say, look, there's a real market for this idea. And we'll try and bring on a broadcaster in a key territory, the UK, Australia, to help fund it. We'll give a distribution advance, and that means that um, we, can, we can work with producers to create programming that will sell around the world. We recently launched uh, Apollo 8, which marks the anniversary uh, of the Apollo 8 um, mission, and that's something that we worked with a producer that's not part of the group. We're continuing now to work with them um, on a series, Photographs That Changed the World. So yeah, we'll work with producers within the group or outside the group, depending on, on what people put in development. We distribute lots of Nordic content. Um, we launched a Spanish series this year. So we'll work with production companies um, who've got great ideas um, that work in their territory and, and take it around the world. And we've been doing that with the UK forever. And you know, the UK is still seen as a really innovative market that's producing great content and the world is really interested in it. We've got competition now from, from other territories, but I think that's great. And you know, a lot of the global streamers are saying they're wanting programming that, that appeals to local audiences within their global footprint. And then they find actually that that appeals elsewhere and it's because you're telling an authentic local story, um, people in other territories get that. With the streamers we're finding that often they will pick up a show for one territory and if it worked there they might increase the rights. So there are lots of examples of shows that we've sold that actually have an almost global footprint with a streamer now because the show has been successful and it's kind of travelled then around the world. So you know we've got a show called Occupied which is produced in Norway um, and that airs just about everywhere around the world now because it's a great story that's of the moment and people are interested and fascinated in it and people are much more accepting now um, to watch programming that's not in their own language. The streamers are moving to a place where they will want global rights off and they'll want a second window in the commissioning territory and then the world and that is something that can work for us um, so sometimes we will have a, a programme that we think actually the perfect partner is a global streaming service that we can do one deal and we'll, we'll sell the programme around the world. Sometimes we think actually it's going to be better on this project to work with broadcasters in different countries. Um, we will kind of slice up the rights and sell them differently. So, you know, different content, different um, opportunities. There are lots of things that we take into consideration and one might be the risk that we've got on a certain project. Um, if there's a huge risk and you get early interest from a global streamer, we might decide actually that's a good way um, to recover the, the risk. We might think that actually we're going to make more money if we sell to individual territories. So it kind of depends on the deals that are on the table, our overall um, appetite for risk, and you know how relevant you think a, a program is going to be to a number of different territories.